Hi, everybody, and welcome to our EdTech Tuesday. Today, we're going to be talking about organizing your life with classroom screen tools like timers, groups, silencer, and more. My name is Valentin Guerra. Alongside here, we have Deborah Pingle, and she will be helping out during the chat. I will be looking at the chat, so just feel free to put in any questions that you may have in there, and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, make sure that you keep your muke, your muke, your mic muted, and feel free to type questions, like I said, in the chat. If you have not registered for the PD in the, for the session, use the PD system, and the session code is three four three two five eight. Remember, if you already registered, or even if you're just going to register right now, do the remote checking code PSJ Tech on the PD system to get PD credit. So we're going to be doing an overview of classroom. Uh, screen the widgets and the stools that they come in there. So these are some of the classroom screen widgets that we're going to be discussing. Timer, random name picker, traffic light, text widget, drawing tool, QR code generator, poll widget, groups and grouping, and how to back create background and customizations on Canva. All right, so Cluster Screen is a free digital platform, but there's also a premium version that could be purchased. And we're going to be talking about the differences very um, briefly on them. But uh, well, I can tell you right now, uh, the, the backgrounds or your, your screens are not saved if you're close to your browser. That's one of the main things. And then you have access to putting more names because for uh, randomization and groups, you're allowed to get more names you can get up to three lists for free in the free version, but in the paid version, it's just very little difference. But the main thing is that you are able to keep your screens even if you close your browser. And it will allow you to engage your students effectively. It will provide you uh, classroom management tools. And also it will provide widgets that you can utilize for your teaching. So let's talk about these first two. The timer widget will do a countdown for activities. It gives you a visual representation of time and it helps students to manage time effectively. One of the things that you will notice when we go live about the widgets is the bigger and smaller or different shapes that you make them, they change the letters. So make sure to play around with that to see what works better for you. Uh, you you want to customize the duration and how the display works. Random name picker. So this will allow you, I don't know if you've used the little uh, random name pickers in, in a cup and you start doing it or a wheel of names. Well, this random name picker allows you to grab your roster. You put it in there. You can just do first names. You can do last names if you want. And it will ensure fair participation of all students. It can also be used for grouping. One of the coolest features that I like about grouping is that when you know some of your students might not collaborate well together, you can make it that you link them and in the randomizer, it will never put those two students or those three students together in a group. Another thing that I will show you is that also in this, in the customizable lists, you can create a list for uh, let's say your groups themselves. So if you have a question and you want the whole group to work on it, you can randomize. And I'll be showing that live. Next, the traffic light and the text widget. Traffic light is just for behavior. It will give you a green, a yellow, and a red light. Uh, think about if there's, it, it's behavior. But one of the other things that I like to use it for is also for green. All right, let's start, everyone. Time to start working. If I put it in yellow more than, more than for, for behavior, I like it for as a warning of the time. So kind of like the timer keeper, but it will be you, especially for those little ones. If you have early childhood students that might not know how to read a uh, watch or a clock yet, this will be a good one to tell them red time to stop. Now it's time to come back together as a group. So it also helps manage classroom noise, but there is a widget specific for that that I'm going to be sh showing you also for the classroom noise that it will give you a little ding whenever the classroom is going loud. The text widget allows you to display important information or instruction in various parts of your screen. So I want you to think about Classroom Screen as a background or your desktop. And then you can add widgets, you can add images, you can also put text in there in like a text box. And you can change the font size, the color, you can use objects, you can um, 
put the, I don't know, if you're going to be using for subject specific, what is the subject, what is the TIG, what is the objectives, any reminders or any quotes that you want to uh, put in there. And they can also be used in conjunction with other widgets. The following two that I'm going to be just briefly talking about again is the drawing tool. So it's just like a whiteboard digitally. You can change the colors and the brushes and it will allow you to do that. But one of the things that I do notice that is new on Classroom Screen is that there is a functionality of a drawing tool throughout for the background. And I'm going to show that also additional. The poll widget is just a quick interactive poll that you can ask a question and your students can join uh, with a link and a code or they can scan with a QR code and the display the results are displayed in real time so you can do these questions ahead of time and it encourages active participation of course you can also do it manually where if you're using your new line they can come and touch if you have the touch activated QR code generator you can create access for um, anything that you can create a QR code for. So if you have a link, let's say, of uh, slides that you want to give to your participants or to your students or an image or a, a Google form, you put the link in there and it will generate a QR code where they can use a device and scan it. It is very easy to share those links and it directs the students directly in real time with any URL that you have. Like I said, in groups and grouping, it is easily to create those student groups there's three that it will be saved automatically, but it allows you for randomly assigned students, customize your group sizes, you configure those groups for future use. Remember I told you you can select students that might not collaborate well together. You can block for them to be put in a group anytime that you do a randomizing. And it's very useful for collaborating activities and projects. So what is the benefits of these grouping tools? It saves time for organizing your group work. It does, it's done automatically for you. And it, it is, ensures that it's fair and random in the assignments for your students. It gives you the flexibility to adjust the groups as needed, and it encourages your students to be in diverse situations and interactions. One last thing that I wanted to talk to you about, one of the things that I found really easy, and it cut off right now when I brought it into Nearpod, is using Canva to create your backgrounds. Not only can you use uh, the, the QR code generator, but if you have a QR code or something that you will do every single day, like a exit ticket, and you want your students to fill it out every time at the end of your class, you can create a background where there's images already in uh, names or writing that is set. So you specifically remember that I did tell you if you close your browser, it will erase your screen. Well, if you have this created, you don't have to bring up a lot of different tools. So this is like a little app smashing with classroom screen and Canva. So to create the Canva backgrounds, things to remember, you open Canva and then you do the presentation template and you wanna do an aspect ratio of 69, which um, you can also uh, set the pixels, which is, I believe is 1290 by 1080, but I'll double check with that and just make sure that you download it as a PNG or a JPEG file. This is an image and that's what you're able to upload into Classroom Screen. And the classroom management applications, like you use the timers, we use a monitor of the noise levels, which we're going to be do doing that. The traffic light, uh, the clear instructions with the text widget, facilitate the name picker uh, and conduct quick polls by understanding. Now let's go live on Classroom Screen. Uh, let me see, exit this right here. If you haven't joined, Debbie has put the join code for Nearpod, and I'm only going to be using it for the end of the session because we are going to be selecting our prize winner, our door prize winner, using Nearpod during the time to climb. So this is a screen that I created. You will log in into Classroom Screen, and you have a free account. You can create multiple screens as you see here, and this is a collection. Now, I'm only going to be using one screen, but you can go back and forth between the different screens. So to create, you can add a collection or add a screen. And this is where you will upload your background by putting in settings. You will um, do the ratio, the ratio in here. Let me go back to my screens. And in here, 
Ooh, where is it? Once you're in here and you go in here into the tools, you will select the background. And if you create it on Canva, then you can just upload it like I did it here, which is my favorite. It, I just created one for a class. You can select anyone if you want to make it Halloween spooky. They have some free ones. The ones that, uh, that, that are start are the favorite ones that you selected. So you can always have it there at the top. And all of these are available for you to, for free. You can do dots and lines. There's a bunch of them that you can do. But if you see this little plus that is not the star, this are premium features that you will have to do plan and pricing to be able to access them. Now I'm going to go back to my screen that I created, the first one. And I said, welcome to class. I'm using, I'm going to be using here a lot of different tools for, um, a lesson that will be for tomorrow for math for fourth grade. So the subject is fourth math, fourth grade, and this is just a text. So what I did, you see the tools right here at the bottom. You can hide them if you already have them created. But if you're going to be working with them, these are all the tools, the poll, the randomizer, QR code, sound level, embedding. This is very special. And I'm going to show you this. This is how I, I'm bringing the Google Slides created for the, um, the lesson for tomorrow uh, by our math department and it's bringing them in here so you can just use your classroom screen as well as a as a google slide presenter present presenter images you can bring images so myself i i like traveling a lot so this is just some of the countries that i've been to so i just wanted to put an image and you just go in there and you all blow open the settings and upload an image to put whatever you want Work symbols, we're going to be discussing here. This is a good representa visual representation for your students. Traffic lag timer, if you click on more, then you have calendar, dice, uh, group making, stopwatch, webcam, video, clock, draw. Now, all of these are good, but for time purposes, I'm not going to focus on each and every one of them. But I do want to tell you that if you look at webcam, if you have a document camera and is attached already to your computer by USB, it can be considered one of the webcams. So when you do it here and you allow uh, on every visit, uh, it's not going to show anything right now because I only have one camera. But if you select, if you have different cameras and one is your document camera, you can select that camera. Um, in here, we'll give you the options of the cameras that you have, then you can make it bigger and see your document camera in here as well. So I'm just going to go through there and I'm going to start with the ones that I told you. So one of the ones that I was telling you is about noise reduction. So let's say your students are talking and you don't want them to talk too loud. It will use your microphone and if it gets really loud, then you see this little bell in here? When the time it is, it means that it passed already a few times. And if your students start talking louder, it will do that ding noise unless you do it here or unless you mute your microphone. There you go. Let me show you one more time. Hello! And it dings every single time. So I'm just going to delete it since we already went through it. Uh, one of the things that I want to show you in here, this is the drawing tool that I was showing, that I was talking about. So in here, if you have your new line and you do have the, the touch enabled, you can use your finger, you can use in here to write whatever you want quickly, you can create shapes, anything you want, very, very fast. Now, if you want to do, a, let's say, compare and contrast, you can create it as well and then start adding what you want in here. The timer is simple. You just get a timer, but like I told you, if you make it bigger, it changes. So how do you want to represent it with your students? It's up to you. Of course, you can go to settings and change a lot of the settings, colors, as you please, whatever you like. So this is a background that I created in Canva. But the wording, I also put it in Canva. I just grabbed an image. I wanted a, a, a blackboard, and I did it in here. So for those of you who do have their mobile devices on you, who in here, and I want to see it on the chat, 
Has somebody scanned this QR code just because you were curious about what we'll do by scanning that QR code? Did anybody scan it? This QR code, I put it by the QR code generator. Has anybody scanned it yet? You can unmute yourself or you can type it on the chat. What does it say, Lori? Can you tell me? Technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. So I really like this QR code generator because when I've done presentations and I've used classroom screen, I know people like scanning automatically when they see a QR code. So if you click on the QR code, you can type any text. Hello, beautiful. And it will generate a QR code that will display those words. To, to me, that's kind of cool, but not only for that, but if you do have an exit ticket or if you have any slides or any documents that you want to share with your students, you can paste the link and it will take you there automatically. So I thought that was kind of cool. I wanted to give you that uh, really cool quote, tech quote, for you to enjoy it. In here on the left is one of the polls, and I have it closed right now. But one of the things that I want to show you, you type the, the, the question that you want. So what do you think of today's lesson? And if you open it, now it's open, it will give you, go to joincrs.com, which I'm going to copy it. In the chat. No, it's not it. You can go to joincrs.com and type code 926219. Another thing that you can do, you can click in here and it will show up a QR code where your students can access it. Now, this will be easy for students that have their own uh, devices. If they have Chromebooks, it's a little bit harder because not all of them are easy to have two cameras to be able to scan them. So one of the things that you can do, like I said, copy this and put it on the uh, chat with your students. And then you can also put copy and paste the, or just type 9626219, the code that they need to do. Thank you, Debbie. That's exactly the quote that said on that QR code. So I'm going to close this, and I want to see, I have already one answer. What do you think of today's lesson? Green is good, red is bad. So you can also hide it so you don't see the scores but you, you're able to see um, how many people have responded. I can hide the results. I can close the voting. And it gives you some, act, uh, as a teacher, whatever question you want to ask, it gives you immediate feedback on how you're doing. And, or maybe if you, depending on the question that you have, it will allow you to get ideas on what you need to go over again. It's okay, Rosalba, don't worry about accidentally closing it, but I'm gonna close it now. I got three responses, and I'm gonna go to the next tool. Now, we did talk about randomizers. So in here, I had already created a group. So I'm gonna go into home so I can show you where to create the groups, and you're gonna go to name lists. So I created a name list of students. I actually asked Reina, in a magic school to give me a random list of names for 20 people. So if you go here, new list, you will edit it. And if you have your roster, you will just type them in here. So like I, like I told you, I want to, uh, you can go to chat GPT or to uh, Copilot. And then what I did just that for right now, but just to show you a name, give me a name of, give me, a list of 20 random names, only first names. So if you don't want, last name is fine. And then I'll ask him like, remove, remove the numbers. That way, I just go here and, ah, my copy and paste is not acting really good. Uh, 
I didn't copy that many. Like I said, my copy and paste has not been acting friendly today. And that's just, and the other names. Well, no, that was one name. So I have to put it put in individual as a list. Because that's what I did before. And now, ba -ba 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 -ba, they have to be spaced. So I learned that right now. I thought it will take them with the comma separating them, but it didn't. And then you have the names and you have all of the students in here. So when you close set, it's right there and you can use them for randomizer. Now I did it for teams and I just did random callers and it works great as well. So I'm going to be back here and here in randomizer, it will select the student who you want to answer a question or maybe there will be uh, having classroom jobs for that day. If you're going to do it, you do it like this and it just keeps on randomizing. Um, this is, to me, it's a really cool tool. And like I said, with the grouping, I did another one right here that will say, okay, now group red. I want you to work on this problem and then you're going to be coming to the front of the, of the class and show your work on how you solve this math problem. So anything that, that you want to do, and then you can provide another, uh, the magenta group, another different problem. So they're all working um, randomly on an assigned problem based on today's lesson, which the objective is multiply two digit multiples by, of 10 by two digit multiples of 10 with an area model. Now I did tell you that I have the slides for Google in here. And then I have the slides that I created, and then I'm gonna bring this uh, forward because, bring it to the front. I, I don't want it to be back. So the way to do this, I'm gonna minimize this. I can also, you can make it edge it, or you can, uh, where is the spotlight? Spotlight just brings whatever widget that you wanna use and makes it into center stage. So in here, you keep on going and you go and do your lesson. It tells you the TIG. So all of this is information that came from that, from that Google slide from our math department. So what I did, I went into the uh, curriculum. I, um, let me see, went to the curriculum. I selected the day that this is uh, for tomorrow, went into the Google slides, but to be able to do this, you need to make a duplicate. Once you make a duplicate, let me see if I have it in here. Um, you have to make a duplicate and save it in, in, your, in your Google Drive. So you make a copy of the entire presentation. Make sure that you change the folder because if not, it's not going to allow you if you don't have rights to save it there. But you don't want to save it in the curriculum folder. You want to make sure that you save it in your own folder. Mm -hmm. If it wants to, I'm only going to have five minutes. So let me just show you real quick, see if I can find it. In a different way. Let me go to google.com and it's called fourth grade. Then they stop. Well, I'm just gonna open a random, a random slides presentation that is here. So I'm gonna do, let's say this one. And you're gonna have to go to share, publish to web, and I can create a step by step. But if you're seeing how I'm doing it, this is recorded, and I will provide it to YouTube. Um, it will be on YouTube. So if you uh, don't remember how to do it, so you embed it and you publish to web, to web. Make sure, how, I don't know how many minutes you want, but you can change that. Once it gives you this, this is called the, the HTML code for it, and you will go into classroom screen, and you will use the embed code, paste it in here, run the code, and it will give you your Google Slides presentation. If you like this feature and you want to know how to do it because I went really quickly through it, just send me a message and I can guide you through it or just watch the slides in a little bit slower motion. 
One of the last things that I want to show you is that when you have widgets, you can swipe them left or right, and they will disappear, but they will show as a shortcut in here. So here, this was the embed code. It will open it up again. If I put it in this way, it will show in this side. And this is the other one that I was telling you. So this is the traffic light. So you select the color that you want. I like using it for start with your work. We have one minute left or done. We're done. And one of the last tools that I wanted to show you also was this one. This one, you can switch it. You can say it's time for quiet. It's time to whisper. Ask your neighbor. Work together. I don't remember what this QR code was. But, Al, this QR code gives you access to shortcuts that are here for um, keyword shortcuts to be able to do on your classroom screen. So, for example, if you put B, it will shortcut this up. And if you do, I believe, number one, it will blur your screen to start your presentation and nobody sees what's going on. The last thing that I did do on Canva was this exit ticket. Scan it. It will take you to a Google form, which is this one. And it will tell you name, email, what was one important thing you learned in class today? Did you feel prepared for today's lesson? And what will you do to make today's lesson more effective? There's a bunch of tools, like I told you in here in Classroom skill, Screen. Um, make sure that you go and navigate. If you do have some questions and you want to reach out, me, myself, Debbie, uh, uh, David is also here with us right now. With, uh, so feel free to reach out to us and we're here to support you. Now let me go back to the Nearport lesson and let's do our time to climb. All right, again, if you have not joined the Nearpod, here's the link again. Debbie just put it in there. I was going to put it one more time, but I'm just going to do Carnival, and I'm waiting for people to connect. Remember, the participants in here are the ones that are able to receive that prize by answering the questions. There we go. Thank you, Lori. Do we have anybody else that wants to join? Becky or Ms. Mutanda? All right, I have two players. I'm going to start this round. Ms. Butanda, if you hurry up, you can still join. Here we go. What is the primary purpose of classroom school? To create digital art, manage classroom activities and engage students? Yes, that's the correct answer. Which of the following is not a widget and available in classroom screen? Come on, Mr. Tumba. All right. Grading calculator was not the, the only widget from those four that is not on classroom screen. Now, these questions I created them. Um, how can Canva be integrated with classroom screen? This question was created uh, directly from right now on Manchester. And the completion of the slide was created uh, on the slide camera.
at the also at the end of the slides you will have this information which is the ultimate guide for classroom screen from classroom screen and a teacher tutorial video that i found very useful thank you so much for being here with us i went one minute over feel free to go and check our youtube channel and also if you feel like this was a really good training Fill out that link survey for the care. I don't even know. Debbie and I were, were discussing that. We don't know if those are still going, but we would like to get good feedback. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to stop the recording and enjoy the rest of your